We were expecting hydrogen cars to take over the world years ago. But so far, we've got more Priuses and Teslas. What happened to the fanfare of the car that runs on water, man? It's been a while since we've heard anything about hydrogen cars, seemingly because the market wasn't ready to look past its disadvantages yet. Back in 2014, we saw the very first commercial hydrogen fuel cell vehicle debut with the Toyota Mirai. It was a promising alternative and cost about $60,000 to own. But the sticker price wasn't the only drawback for the average driver. The infrastructure for hydrogen cars just isn't there yet. Fuel stations are still few and far between, and the cost to build more is a challenge when few people are buying the cars in the first place. Plus, competition is steep. Why pay for a hydrogen car when you can get an electric one for less, save money, and you're helping the environment? Ultimately, this is a classic chicken of the egg situation. Without the infrastructure, the auto industry won't push hydrogen fuel cell cars. But without consumers asking for the hydrogen vehicles, there's less demand to build the infrastructure. It doesn't help that building a new hydrogen distribution infrastructure, like fueling stations and hydrogen gas itself, is expensive and complicated. The most common way we get hydrogen gas is to separate it from natural gas. But that split still causes CO2 emissions. And the alternative? Ideally, we'd use electricity from solar and wind farms to split hydrogen from water, a process called electrolysis. But we don't have the infrastructure for that either. Right now, we'd have to use electricity that comes from power plants where we still emit CO2. Both of our current processes defeat the purpose of this whole carbon-free endeavor and are ultimately another roadblock for the hydrogen car. On top of the infrastructure challenges, hydrogen fuel cells are costly and complex to make. One fuel cell stack can cost Toyota up to $11,000. The heart of the hydrogen fuel cell is comprised of an anode and a cathode, usually mixed with small particles of platinum a thin material called the polymer electrolyte membrane, and a gas diffusion layer. Platinum is a special catalyst for the chemical reactions in the fuel cell. When hydrogen is pumped through the anode side, the platinum separates the hydrogen into protons and electrons. Since the negatively charged electrons can't transfer through the special membrane like the hydrogen ions, they get shuffled through a circuit, and that flow of electrons creates an electrical current that powers the car. Cool. The electrons then come around the other side, meet their hydrogen partners, throw a little oxygen in the mix, and all that is expelled as H2O. Even cool. For their hydrogen car, Toyota stacks their cells 370 layers thick in order to get the energy output they're looking for. All these materials, especially the platinum, amount to a pretty penny. And that's not even including the materials used for the storage of the hydrogen itself, which is also super pricey. But we are getting better at this. Since 2014, fuel cells have become lighter, the platinum catalysts are engineered more efficiently, which means they cost less. Scientists are working on electrolysis systems to make that carbon emission-free hydrogen we need. And there are initiatives globally to get hydrogen vehicles like taxis, buses, and trucks on the road. See, for the average person, hydrogen cars might be impractical, but for long-distance travel with large vehicles, they seem to be a great fit. Electric vehicles need multiple hours of charge time, whereas hydrogen vehicles can be fueled within minutes and have a range of about 500 kilometers, more than fossil fuel and electric vehicles. That might be the reason why Japan has ordered 100 hydrogen buses for the 2020 games, South Korea has commissioned 1,000 buses, and companies in the US have pre-ordered 11,000 commercial trucks. Infrastructure to build hydrogen fueling stations still has a long way to go. The California Fuel Cell Partnership has made it a goal to put 1,000 hydrogen stations in California by 2030 and Japan has similar ambitions. While they currently have 90 hydrogen fueling stations, the country aims to have 900 stations service more than 800,000 FCVs, buses, and forklifts by 2030. So hydrogen cars might not take over the world yet. Realistically, in the future, there will probably be a split between electric, gas, and hydrogen cars. If the industry succeeds, maybe we can make a bigger difference in our carbon footprint and could possibly maybe sort of help us live past 2100 which is something I would like. Like more science in your day? Subscribe. And hydrogen fuel isn't the only way we want to power our public transit. Julian explains how supercapacitors are being used in buses too. Check it out here. Fun fact, the first hydrogen fuel cell ever invented was actually in 1839 by Sir William Robert Grove, but that one didn't produce enough energy to be useful. Thanks for watching everyone, and see you next time on Seeker.